Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And a big, big, giant hug to all of you out there today. Thank you so much for tuning us in and turning us on. And hey, Benny, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, I think I've stretched out (laughs) enough. I think I'm good to go. I'm ready for it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Game on. Game Uh, on. Let's do it. Well, so part of this too is, you know, I don't know, back in the day, I remember like two days before the holiday, stepping out and like eating or drinking just water. And, uh, and then I thought, why am I doing that? That is like such an interesting approach to it. Um, and so now it's kind of like, how do we just simply enjoy the company of the people we're around, gratitude for the food that we have in front of us, and a big shout out to all of you out there that I usually hang out with on this holiday as we help deliver food for people. I will miss all of you. I know you've been in the kitchens. I know you've been cooking them turkeys. I know you've been making those pies. And I know you're in your cars delivering them. So a big shout out to all of you. Today, uh, Benny, really great show. I want to introduce everybody to Dr. Jeanette Wolf. And the reason I want to, I'm going to give you a little backstory of, of what my past week has been like. I got to experience firsthand levels of communication that for somebody like me were so out of alignment with anything I could understand or comprehend. And I really didn't understand why. I didn't understand much about the words that were coming out from everyone's mouth. You know, the level of judgment that was being made, the fear that shows up in all of that. And I must say, that clear speak was not on the menu. Today, I want to introduce all of you to Clear Speak Creation with Dr. Jeanette Wolf and her fabulous show that we are so pleased to introduce to all of you. Clear Speak, self-editing tools that distill clear language as the building blocks to create the life you love. Sense it, think it, speak it, live it now. Today, we're going to take you on a journey that's going to look at what life is like, how we go down this pathway as you hear Dr. Wolf's story about her history, her journey, clear speak origins, what it offers to individuals, to schools, to corporations. I don't know if she does this, but I'm hoping she'll get into hospitals after my past week here. But the point is this. The one thing I know about doing radio now for 15 years, I am the one that decides when I open my mouth what's going to come out. And yet, I think most of us are so out of the loop with what's possible. Today, Dr. Jeanette Wolf, her work, her concepts, concepts they contain common threads through a wide variety of co- uh, clients, children, parents, adults, you name it. All of the above has been part of her journey. All of it has been part of what she brings to the surface. Whether we're looking at our everyday lives, our work lives, whether we're looking at bringing balance to both inner environment of body, mind, spirit, external environment, whether she's working in homes and offices and educational space, these time-tested proven tools, these systems, by the way, are remarkable. They're remarkable because we learn from them, we live from them, we inspire from them, and we expand our perspectives, our potentiality, our possibilities, and we honor 
personal journeys of those that are in the realm or sphere of who we are and who we're in front of. And what we do through this is we all come together from a conscious living perspective. And as a result of that, we get to create a world that is so juicy for all of us. So today's show, you're going to hear the story that leads this pathway that brings us to this place of understanding how Dr. Jeanette Wolf said yes, but what was it about the history of this? And what was it about the passion that got instilled and fired up within her for today to be one of the most sought after people? I'm probably gonna give her name to the hospital I was at. Was sought after people that can help us literally, literally understand each other. Dr. Wolf, it's great to have you here. Hello, Dr. Pat. It's great to be with you and with all of your listeners. Thank you so much. You know, I am so eager uh, as we take this journey together, also our listeners, for you to share what you learn and how ClearSpeak works. Um, and as I know with so many people, uh, it is this body of work that you're doing, your passion and your purpose about it, it comes from a place that it's hard to describe. But it does come from a place, a history, a journey, a story. And I, I, I'm, I'm curious, is that the case for you? Absolutely. And I will say that my early programming was certainly a little bit less than typical uh, in that my greatest lessons really did come from, from my early childhood with my parents sitting around this huge table and, and being consistently reminded of the cycles and the seasons and how uh, the constructive cycles and the destructive cycles were equivalent. And mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time really looking at the way things naturally flowed in nature so that, and I had a huge fascination with Harry Houdini when I was younger, and I will say that, that listening to him and studying him in the early years really supported so many of the moments in my life, um, particularly situations with my health and others' health, where I remember him saying, never, ever go into fear and panic. Mm. Always stay present with yourself. And mm. that certainly, I will say, it has saved my life. So, so that, that place of pure presence, without a doubt, was a big part of my programming. Yeah, I have to tell you, that's so important. I mean, I, you know, I'm having experience here with a family member that is in critical care. And I don't think it's a mistake that I got to talk to you this week and I got to review uh, more than one time uh, th what we're about to talk about today. Because that one bit of information to be aware of myself and what is showing up for me and how fear might look, I think that in itself is, is significant. Now, I don't claim to know what to do about it after that, but that's why you're here. <laughs> Well, and so, and so what it really boils down to is, is, again, questioning everything. And, you know, we throw around these words even even in what we think are conscious communities, I hear that word all the time, conscious or woke or enlightened and the many iterations thereof. And, and even on social media, it's so interesting to me to see how, how when we feel that we are somehow conscious or we have a message to give, that we drop into, you know, memes are such a huge part of our life right now. This morning I saw one that said, your new life is going to cost you your old one. And, and while we're all evolving, what's really, really interesting about a statement like that is that it, it's really coming from scarcity consciousness. Right? The butterfly doesn't lose its life, neither does the frog. And so when we, when we pass on statements just because somehow it triggers an old core wound and we're like, oh, yes, I'm so enlightened, I'm moving into this new life, but it's going to cost me my old one, what are we really saying? So how often do we question the narratives around us? How often do we simply go by habit by someone else's fear, by someone else's idea of what's supposed to be, because we're, we're seeking or we believe that we exist even in a conscious community. And how often do we use the language around us 
without really paying attention. Even even the concepts of strong. We see so many things about being a strong woman, and the connotation behind that is somehow that is weak something to be judged or not to be. And isn't it really about the whole of it and how many moments do we feel vulnerable or less than strong and we end up beating ourselves up and that actually affects our synapses. It, it, it's the looping in the mind. There's actually a physiology behind that. The reticular activating system in the mind holds on to the ideas that loop. And so clear speak and, and mindfully choosing our words and questioning the narratives out there helps you expand the loops in your mind to actually creating versus the place of worrying. You know, we run around saying, oh, I can't stop thinking about how horrible that is. Well, we actually can stop thinking about how horrible it is and choose to contemplate solution. How often do we seek healers or authority outside of ourselves to fix us? Or we reach for an app to give us a daily fix or we seek a cure. How often do we hear toxic person or toxic situation or negative habit or negative self-talk? And how often do we humans fight to survive a disease or a situation and feel the victim and pay attention to surviving in victimhood versus turning attention and intention to solution? Mm -hmm. So clear speak is questioning what is said and sensing what's behind it and placing our attention on, on responsibility, personal responsibility, being responsible in the moment, and not beating ourselves up for being less than what we think that we're supposed to be. You know, we run around saying words like spiritual gangsta. Well, I don't know about you, Pat, <laughs> but, you know, would you like to have a life, spiritual or otherwise, influenced and enforced through being held up? Um, or the, fe- the future is feminine. It actually denies the whole. And, uh-huh. and that, that's what I find so interesting. Like integrity is such a beautiful word because, because it means whole and integer. So, so there's so much judgment around being an in integrity or not and this idea of one over the other. And I would say that, that it would be wonderful if we could all turn our attention to the wholeness of what integrity roots are, right? The, the root of that word is soundness and wholeness. And actually, even the French took it a step further, and, and they coined the word integrate, and it was not just to be whole, but to be in perfect condition. And I think etymology is just wonderful because it reminds us of, of the legacies that language leaves and how we how we often twist it according to the emotional spaces and places and the wounds that have been handed to us by others. Mm. Yeah, I haven't been called that. I haven't been called the spiritual gangster, but I have been called a spiritual hitchhiker. I don't think that's any better, is it? (laughs) I don't know. And I don't know if there's better or worse, to tell you the truth. It's just that place of, of saying things with judgment behind it. And I would say that that's a huge part really of what over the years really has become ever more finely tuned for me. I remember being little and being very, very aware when, when people would say things, when teachers would say things, when authority figures would say things, and I knew that the words and the energy behind it were not, um, were not I hate to use the word in alignment, but I guess for the sake of this, and I do believe we're creating a language now Mm -hmm. in this bridge space out of linear and cause and effect, Um, and we're looking for ways to describe energy that maybe doesn't quite yet have a a perspective. It's like saying to someone, you know, is an old soul better than a young soul? Is a strong person better than that? Does a healer know better than the person in front of the healer? And and actually, that reminds me of a, a wonderful quote from Pema Chodron. And she, she, I'll have to paraphrase it, but it's something to the effect of compassion is not the relationship between the healer and the wounded. It doesn't afford the contrast. Compassion is a relationship between equals. And I would say that that's the perfect description of what I'm feeling is, is evolving now. It's not losing a life or fixing somebody or fixing ourselves and hating the parts of us that are less than comfortable. 
as we embrace our own darkness, we can become present with the darkness of others. And that's where compassion becomes real, because we recognize our shared humanity. And that's the space of clear speak. Mm. It's really just very simple principles. Yeah, I I love this. I love this because, you know, you and I have been talking this week and somebody said something to me the other day um, about what if we had a way to take the sting, S-T-I-N-G, sting, like a bee sting, right? Mm -hmm. What if we had a way to take the sting out of communicating? And I thought, oh, wait a minute. That's actually what Dr. Wolf and I are going to talk about. Now, I know you wouldn't refer to it as as sting, but when we make a judgment about somebody or when we in in not even in language, I mean, it could be body language, you know, and have an expression. I'm not 100 percent clear. Maybe you can help me with this. If we even understand the impact of that. Um, I I would say that. Some of us do, and all of us have the potential to really understand that. I'm going to give you a really cool example. Um, About three years ago, a family that had three children that were on the spectrum asked me to come and sit with them because one of the kids was, was very, very antagonistic towards a teacher that they had flown in. And, and they, were, they were a very comfortable family, so they had a crew of, of um, amazing authority figures that were there to fix their children. And one day, their, their third child turned around and gave this, this um, autist specialist an uppercut, and the teacher flew across the room. And they couldn't understand why, and, the, and one of the parents was ready to just drug the child, and they were tired of all of this, and the other parent was like, no, there's something else here. There's something wrong, but we don't understand it. And so I observed the interaction between this particular um, authority figure and the child, and, and the person walked into the room um, with a pile, with a basket of toys and things like that, and... Um, and the child was at the other end of the room, and you could already see this, this space of, of static between them. And the teacher sat down on the floor with a big smile and was like, okay, we're going to play today. And, um, and the, child, the child went under the table, turned their back, and the teacher wouldn't go. She's like, no, 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 we have to play, we have to play. And, um, and she got closer and closer and didn't really observe the, the space of the child, and again, the child hit her hard, and the father went in and tried to break everything up. And um, and they were like, "Well, you can go now. You know, you see, this is this is never going to work." Mm-hmm. And um, and I was like, "No, I'd really, I'd really like to go and just sit with this child." And um, they didn't have a, the the child didn't have a lot of fluid language, and so just you know, kind of crept into the room, and and I asked, you know, "Can I sit with you?" And um, and he nodded, and I got a little closer. And mm-hmm. this was really a turning point for me because I felt, um, I felt this child speaking in my head. And, um, and then he got a little closer, and I asked, I said, are we good? And he gave me a hug. And then I said, what is it? You know, what, what, is, what is that piece where you couldn't sit with this other person? And he said, she was lying to me. She came to test me, and she said she was here to play, and she was lying to me, and I don't want to be tested if she says she's going to play with me. And so those mm. are the pieces, while, while that might be an unusual display of what that is, how often, how often do we say one thing, and the energy is quite the opposite? I mean, we do it harmlessly, too, right? Hey, how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> we're not always great you know why do no. we think the great is better <laughs> so so why not just be candid and not candid at the expense of someone else but when we're actually candid we're like you know what i'm kind of in the weeds today tough day can you help me out think about what that does it opens up the space for camaraderie and support and community and it doesn't matter if it's your family or if it's at work, it's like, this, this is how I'm feeling. 
And I would say that's another really vital part about ClearSpeak because, you know, we live in a world where where people feel that they can throw their emotions at others because, well, it's their time to feel what they feel. And we're all allowed to feel what we feel, but I would say, oh, and I just said but, and I will say that but is not a part of ClearSpeak. So it's fun because we catch ourselves too. Yeah, yeah I think we... you're picking it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do believe that that we become the energy of the space that we share often, but I'm not sure that's you. So, so <laughs> when, when we use and instead of but, it allows two yeah. perspectives to exist at the same time. And yeah. That's a really key piece as well. So it's less about you make me feel this way, and right these these are not new concepts. It's simply something that takes mindfulness to consistently pause and choose the words that are the building blocks for our experience, and that invite others in. Right? It and and we don't take the time because we often go on road. Even getting up in the morning, how often do people take the time to brush their their teeth with the opposite hand. And we really should shake it up here and there and feel what it feels like to do something out of the norm because it actually expands the brain synapses as well. So it's really about meeting ourselves, our loved ones, our colleagues, and the world at large from a place of compassion, right, as equals, from a place of integrity, wholeness, not a moral judgment, a place of presence, again, and that's, that's a really cool piece, too, that I believe really supported my, my um, awareness of clear, clear speak. I grew up speaking German, and yeah. um, German is a language that has only present tense. And when we operate in present tense with our language, it creates the markers. And there are actually really interesting studies that show that languages that are only present tense um, – hold people in the space of actually saving more by the time they retire, being more accountable, because we're not, we're not accessing the past and projecting it into the future of what could go wrong. And so from there, there's an acceptance of what is, coupled with a consistent choice to be respondable moment to moment and yeah. respondable unto ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And so the principles have evolved from my personal experiences and um, and it's it's really been amazing to watch parents and corporations. And I would say the other really cool part about my life, and you know, some parts of my life have have been likened to fairy tales, and others to horror stories. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but I went from I went from corporate America to um, to seeking naturopathy because I felt I didn't I didn't necessarily fit in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started working with kids, um, mainly because my, my son arrived and he is just, I would say, my greatest teacher of all. <laughs> and the blessing of where I am now is that a lot of the, the kids that um, were considered on the spectrum or somehow different are actually grown up and they're creating amazing change in the world. And, and I work with corporations and governments around the world with people that are that are moving beyond the principles of what's supposed to be or what's considered a norm without having to define yeah. that. Yeah. I want to talk about that for one minute uh, before we go to break. Uh, Dr. Jeanette Wolf, everyone, uh, for those of you out there, what I want to say about this is she has a fabulous show starting this Friday. Here, here's the question I want to ask you. I am considered um, learning different. That I think that's the politically correct word mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. learning different. We used to have a whole bunch of other phrases for it. But even with that word, it doesn't really honor the person. Um, and in my case, um, growing up, there weren't the kind of tests that I could take that other people would do well at. You know, I wouldn't be able to do well at those same tests. Um, and did my best to study and get enough of a GRE score that uh, it would help me move on. But I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm in my first year in my master's doctoral program up at Claremont, and I'm sitting down, and, and you know, one of my practice mates comes in. We study together, Vinda, and she comes in, and she's trying to copy my paper, 
to my, my equations. And she's looking at the board and she's looking at the paper and she tops, uh, she hits me and she says, you're writing the wrong formulas down. And so I looked at her and I said, I'm not. She says, you're just not writing the right formulas down. That's, those are not the formulas. You're writing the wrong formulas down. And I said, honestly, I don't see it. What, what am I doing? So long story short, we got together afterwards. And what I discovered is that there's actually a term for me. It's a big, long term. In the end, if you want to focus on what that term is, from what was the, what did we say before? From a negative perspective, it's going to be a long road. But what I discovered about it when I did a little checking, Dr. Wolf, is that people like me can take broad concepts, broad multifaceted theories, concepts, and we see them visually. So every word you speak, I see. Mm -hmm. I can't see the word, but I see the thing, the story you told, have an image of it, have an emotion of it. And I see that. And so what happens to somebody like me, and there are thousands, maybe millions, is you could almost flunk the statistics exam. Or if you're like me, you make a trade with Vinda and Vinda helps you with statistics and you help her build one of the most incredible complex theories and thesis for her doctoral program. When we come back, we're going to talk about what that means for you, what it means for the world and what would happen. What would happen if somehow, somewhere along the way, we stop labeling each other. Dr. Mm -hmm. Jeanette Wolf, when we come back, we'll tell you how to find out more about her, how to find out more about her work, a radio show, all of the above. And when we come back, she's going to take us on another journey. What is clear speak? And how do each of us get to participate in a new way of seeing the world? We'll be right back. Imagine that you can create anything you choose. Literally, imagine it. Join us to explore the neuroscience of imagination, intention, and clear speak. Tune in to Clear Speak Talk Radio with Dr. Jeanette Wolf on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Every fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, as she explores how your inner dialogue, your conversations, and the words you choose to use can help set goals you keep, achieve greater health and resources, and feel the ease and flow of loving your life. For more information, visit JeanetteWolf.com. Are you ready to consistently tap into the transcendent place where your whole being is available to you and act as a higher level of ability and performance physically, cognitively, emotionally, and effectively? Then join us on ClearSpeak Talk Radio with Dr. Jeanette Wolf on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Go to JeanetteWolf.com, Quantum Body, to sign up for your whole health mentoring. What the fun do I do with my shui? Are you ready to hear what your space is about you and what you're communicating to the outer world about your inner dialogue? Are you ready to create harmony in your surroundings? Then join us on Clear Speak Talk Radio with Dr. Jeanette Wolf on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern for current IT integrated with ancient knowledge to boost the broadcast of your space. Visit JeanetteWolf.com for more information on this amazing approach. What are the Planet Pods and Planet Filters Self-Care Alchemy Essences? Our high vibrational essential oils and body butter contain living energies of specialty herbs and essential oils. All our products are created using the energies of nature. Made from flowers and herbs, each blend is then programmed using crystals, sound, color, sacred geometry, and other energies found in nature. Our products have a delicate aroma, and more importantly, they contain the vibrational signature of plants and other energy forms for optimal healing. Check out planetapothecary.shop to add these to your family's self-care and well-being. Are you ready to broadcast your brand ideal with the latest in information technology? Bioresonant software distills your brand ideal or intention and enhances your core internal organizing principle. This has a tremendous impact on your organization's alignment as well as the behavior, satisfaction, and the retention of its employees. Your physical business structure can unfurl, opening up the possibilities of creating an energetic presence for a brand even ahead of its launch. Check out JeanetteWolf.com for more on a signature frequency branding. 
Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. Yeah, I just want to wish, wish all of you the best, the best of this holiday coming up. I know my Canadian friends, you have a different day, but I know you're in the vibe of it. Uh, for those of you out there, all of the people that listen to the show are responsible for making this happen. To all of you out there, many, many blessings. Today, I am so thrilled and honored to be introducing all of you to Dr. Jeanette Wolf. Why? Because what she has created with clear speak creation, for sure, is going to be the key. It's a pivotal point in the world we live in right now where data is accelerating uh, at a pace that some scientists can't even keep track of right now for what we're getting, how we're getting it, and then what we're doing with it, how we turn it around, what we do to process it emotionally, spiritually, physically, cognitively. But what can we learn about the self-editing tools? What can we learn about this? And then what can we learn? What if you are in the spectrum of things? Dr. Wolf, before we kind of go there, how can people find out more about you? Please tell us about that. Tell us about the direction that your show is going to go as well. Well, everyone can find me at JeanetteWolf.com, pretty simple. And then also PlanetApothecary.com, which was the original uh, corporate website. Jeanette Wolf has some of the more cutting edge approaches to quantum body, master mentoring, clear speak, and, uh, and bioresonance, which is essentially a technology that supports, again, clear speak and all of the other programs because everything boils down to sound. Essentially, right in the beginning, there was the word and the word was sound and the sound became matter. And I would say that my personal experiences um, after after diving into naturopathy, I discovered a rather unusual um, skill whereby I would feel other people's symptoms so deeply, so empathically, that they became my own. And um, and I would say at this point in my life, it, it definitely was an interesting journey to feel so many diseases and to have my physicians say to me, okay, Jeanette, how, how could you go from, from having a cancerous cells to nothing in three days, and what would transpire was I would understand on a sensory level how to unwind the core of those diseases on an emotional, mental level, resolve it unto myself, and then be able to support others with that. And, you know, going back to what you said before the break, that aspect of of, you know, being, learning different somehow, or, or um, as, as we were referring before to the idea of being on the spectrum, I love the term spectrum simply before, because it connotes the whole aspects of light. And so going back to that idea of, of being on the spectrum and being whole, what I would say you and I are, Dr. Pat, are, we're very porous. Mm. Um, there, this, this idea again in spiritual communities that we're supposed to have, have good boundaries to protect ourselves. Actually, every time that we go into that place of feeling like we need to protect ourselves, we're inviting in the very thing that we don't want, which is the attack, right? Or, or when we say, oh, we're not going to make that mistake again. I'm not going to go and sit with that toxic person. We're actually focusing on the toxicity and the mistake and ClearSpeak redirects our attention to the solution of it and being whole unto ourselves. So the beauty of existing in the spectrum is that we're very, very porous. And I would say that that unto itself supports shifting the body, shifting the physiology, and that's quantum body, um, and, and being able then to put into the world a whole offering of a balanced and fully integrated mental, emotional, and physical experience. So, mm. um, yeah, without yeah. labels, we're free. I, I would say that that's really the bottom line. And and the more that we can that we can let go of the idea of of trying to define ourselves, especially from that duality, that's the place. And I, I would say the other really important piece here with Clear Speak and with all of the offerings that I, that I have at Planet and at the lab is that realization that we're here to be responsible to ourselves. We're not here to resolve the duality 
of others. And that's also been a huge part of the spiritual paradigm, that place of I'm going to fix you. And, um, mm. and, and that, that place of power and not power over, but yeah. truly knowing ourselves, our sovereignty is within our own lives and our own experiences. So I, what I can trust as I, as I show up as me and purely me, and I would say that that's a really important piece in these times as well because I don't know about you, Dr. Pat, but every time I try to torque myself into being the idea of what someone else wants me to be for them, it, it just it, it's, it can't work. It's not authentic. It's not integrous. So yeah. as I am who I am, I'm not here to say, this is what I'm going to do for you. It's simply what is me mirrored in the world and around me. And from there, that, that environment can shift. And it's not about saying, do this for your own good. I mean, I had a center for a while and people would come to me and say, you've got to let me work in your center because mm. I know all of these things and I'm going to do it for their own good. And I'm like, ooh, okay. Um, just let's, let's step away from, from the idea that we're going to do good by fixing others. So it's about modeling and we can support each other in this inward journey and we can inspire and affirm and recognize each other's beauty and each other's, and again, right, we're going into dual language, but there's, there's that place where it's like when we can truly love the wholeness, mm -hmm. right, and I'm sure we've all had those relationships where you can sit next yeah. to each other and be stinky and miserable and yeah. have a cold and be angry and you so dearly love them that you don't even see that. Right. And so we can encourage and we can be courageous. I love the word courage because it comes from heart. Cur is French for heart. So we take our heart in our hand and we look inward before choosing and acting. And rather than looking to satisfy these external requirements, we look inside and we honor what we know is true. And the truth is not absolute. It's our truth. And we're not jamming it into anyone else's environment. And so I see this incredible love and gentleness that we can offer and receive in that place of mutual reciprocity, right? I give and receive in equal proportion at the same time. That's actually the perfect cycle of life. And that's the piece where, as we notice, that there's no good or bad or right or wrong, right? We don't judge the ends of a battery. We don't say, oh, my God, it's the negative end of the battery. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, once we understand that flow, that's when we can shift the body. And I will say that that truly is what I came to realize mm -hmm. through a series of cryptogenic um, strokes, neurological wow. anomalies. And, and again, people say, oh, my God, what was wrong with you? The, the point was that there was really nothing wrong with me. In traditional medicine, no one really understood, and that's why they call it cryptogenic. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I saw each one as an incredible upgrade. But the one that really, really, um, really, really gave me the courage to offer the whole of me shifted my physiology to the point where I couldn't breathe and swallow at the same time where um, the entire oh, right oh. side of my face was numb. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. close my eye anymore. Um, I, could, I could barely speak. It was exhausting to speak because the other side of my face would cramp. And, um, and the, more that, the more that I went into the space of how can I respond in this moment, literally nanosecond to nanosecond, um, okay, stop. Okay, yes. If, if you take a breath now and you and you hold the straw that way, guess what? You're not going to choke. And I'll say that's the Houdini part that really was very helpful. Don't panic. And um, and the gift of that, much like your experience this week um, in the hospitals, yeah, is yeah. that even though the people around me that loved me and felt the injustices of um, of a physician that that really walked away from me um, and said, oh, it's such a shame, there's not much we can do. That was her truth. 
that's what she was taught. That was she, that's what she was conditioned to believe was the only option. And that's the moment where I decided to rewrite my truth. And I became so present with myself that clearly now I'm speaking <laughs> quite well. And, um, and I'm out in the world and I do what I do and I love food and there's no issue swallowing and I can catch my breath and I can close my eye. And without any surgery, without any traditional linear medicine that was never supposed to work. So yeah. that's the basis of Clear Speak, right? Presence and creating our truth based on what we're able to do versus what the world has told us is not possible. Yeah. You know, one of the things, too, I'm really struck by is that it isn't always, you know, at least my experience, I guess I, guess I have this recent experience at the hospital, but I have two different experiences that I want to mention. One is the experience that I gleaned from or had uh, based on my conversation with you multiple times this week and being reminded of the possibility. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Maybe you can comment on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is that, you know, what if Pat, you, you know, in the world of a lot of opinions, multiple fear generators, blood work, other work, family members not in agreement, what if you just went to the facts Pat, mm -hmm. what if you just walked up to the director and the infectious disease people and just asked them questions, just ask for the reports, just sat down with them and say, you know, I looked at this number here, this test that you're running for, uh, you know, for uh, a, a lichiosis, and I see that you ran this particular PCR test and, and just said, you know, I want to understand more about this test as my experience with it is that if you're on antibiotics, that this test is uber sensitive. Can we talk about that? Now, that's just one example. The other example is what the bleep are you doing? I know. Hold your hold your ears, Doctor Wolf. That's okay. <laughs> we don't the bleep, go there. <laughs> what the bleep are you doing? Running the test that everybody on the planet that has half of a medical degree looks at and says, "Oh, by the way, don't run this test if the patient already is on antibiotics." That's one response, and the other. I wouldn't have gotten anything with that. Certainly wouldn't still be open to communication. Certainly wouldn't be in service of the patient who is very, very sick. And I don't think we realize that. I don't think we realize that, that there are ways that we can learn. And certainly I, I'm not claiming to learn anything about clear speak right now. I'm just learning what I picked up from you here in a week or two. Um, but certainly it has helped me. And as a result of that, I've got two emails, one from the infectious disease assistant. I had the infectious disease doctor talk to Richard Horowitz, one of the top Lyme doctors in the world, who agreed on the treatment. They're talking to each other. And, and we're in communication with the director of the ICU, as well as the uh, other infectious disease person. And we're talking about, we're talking right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's different. Even when family members, Dr. Wolf, not only are not in agreement, but are, are, what would you say, are in a place where they're so divided that they, it's hard to even see how fear shows up to divide. But I think we're seeing it in the world and otherwise. That's, I think, the power of, of clear speak. And, and again, I got to tell you, I am really not an expert in this. I don't even claim to be. But I did pick up a few things from you this week. I'm glad to hear that. And, and, um, and I would say that truly any time that we feel the need to, um, let's see, how, lash Looking out, at is the that word. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, try, try to, to um, 
to get something to change that we have no yeah. control over, right? right? That that just creates right. um, more friction and more static. So you know, I, and I truly understand that from a very human level, right? As, and and I believe that it's more complex when we're in the care of others than perhaps when it's the care of ourselves to to not be emotional um, or especially someone that we feel can't take care of themselves in the moment, right, when someone is in a critical situation. It's easy to to access that place. So, okay, so yes, I am very frustrated and and I acknowledge that frustration and how can I, how can I choose the word? So I think it was perfect that you asked the questions and the other part is, of course, that diagnostics are wonderful um, because it shows us what's been created to this point. And it also shows us the reality of what is. And if we respond to the reality of what is from a very matter-of-fact way of, ah, I see these tests, hmm, can you explain to me? I'm curious. I am wonder. I'm wondering what you're thinking. Right? Those words, those expressions create space, and it invites in collaboration, which is exactly what you did. And so, so what, what an approach might be with all of this is to gather the facts in terms of, of the medical diagnostics and everything that you've enacted, but also to remember that the fields we give out connect to a field with the same frequency. And so the fields of the frequency matches then can be magnified and expanded. And so I would say that like attracts like in a very, in a very matter-of-fact way. So the more mm-hmm. that you are able to hold that place of matter-of-factness with a family that might be in fear or a patient that's in fear, that mm-hmm. field unto itself shifts. And that's actually where dis-ease comes from. So mm-hmm. the environment of our emotions invites in a virus or a parasite or whatever. If, if, we're, if we're always there in service to everyone else and we're like, oh, sure, I can hold that up for you. Let me do that for you. We'll, we'll, you know, we become the environment of getting our energy siphoned off. And so that I would say that the underlying source of energy that flows into and gives life to all of us, right, we're all receiving the same fundamental impulses. So... With that space in the hospital, everyone's filter was, um, everyone had their own filter. They were seeing through their own lens. And Mm -hmm. in that space, what you offered was the potential and possibility of looking at things in a very matter-of-fact way, and that unto itself opened up new arenas of looking at this. So beautiful. I love it. And see, this is really what we're talking about, though, when we're talking about clear speak. And this is what we're talking about, what you're going to share in your show, because, you know, the tools that you bring forth and, you know, let's just touch upon them for a little bit. You you know, I was looking at this and I was reading them because you gave me the handout, right? Yes. I got the handout. And (laughs) so it would behoove me not to read the handout. Um, and, and so I was looking at it and, and, and I'm looking at, I'm following the steps, right? And I look at, uh, the, the walking through them in multiple situations mm-hmm. and in the end, right. As I did this, um, the question that came up for me, and it wasn't even a question because I don't even understand how I got from where I was to just asking questions, just asking questions. Mm -hmm. But I think this is part of what you're going to share on your radio show, isn't it? And it really does boil down to asking questions, questioning everything. What is my reality? What do I believe? What have I been conditioned to believe? And, and I believe just questioning our own reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every day I say, does this reality serve me? And yep. I never question if it's good or bad and go, oh, my God, this is horrible or be- bemoan it. It's just, does it serve me? And very often, if it's uncomfortable and I'm still there, right, we, we, we live in a life of pursuing happiness, and yet we talk about getting out of our comfort zone for growth. Mm-hmm. So just because we're uncomfortable doesn't make it bad. And just because we're in dis-ease doesn't mean that it's bad or that we're a victim and we have to survive it, because whatever we create, we can discreate. And so the series of, of talks focuses on, on first our physiology, because that is a major topic for so many people, and I'll share 
more about the details of of the quantum body programs and also simply because it is a bridge time and it does take a certain amount of of mastery and mindfulness to come into a place to reorganize your physiology purely with thought. Uh, we've created some amazing products that we're going to be introducing um, within the next six weeks called the Planet Filters. Filters because, P-H-I-L-T-E-R-S, because filters were one of the original points of alchemy. With filters, we could change mm-hmm. matter. And so we filter out the, the original core wounds, and the filters are alchemical, vibratory um, restructuring formulas to support the physiology. Uh, and then after that, we look at, at um, the way that we interact with our children and, um, and ways of supporting our children through clear speak and really paying attention to, you know, are we walking our talk? Um, right. Much like that example that I gave you uh, with, with that um, young man, are we actually saying in words, the same message that's underlying and how often do parents say everything's fine and the kids know that it's not. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll be focusing on the kids as well. And there's an amazing line of, of um, chakra energy center uh, products that are coming out with that as well, that actually support on a very um, simple vibratory level, the, um, the wholeness of, of the kids. And that goes along with, the wholeness, actually, of the parents, too. I have parents that we've been beta testing yeah. this with, and they're like, I use it. So, <laughs> so that's great. And then we dive into, on a broader scale, what, what frequency are you broadcasting to the world? And we look right. at signature frequency for branding. And that doesn't matter if it's the branding of an individual for your career or the branding of a new product or the branding of a corporation. And that's an exciting place for us to play as well. And sensory IQ and looking at... at the most non-invasive way of shifting when people are, are really a bit um, trepidatious about, about putting things in their body or trying new modalities, the brilliance of purely scent. And we've created an amazing line of scents that are not just traditional essential oils. They're pure organic oils that actually have a vibratory level that are synthesized with plasma and bioresonance and gemstones mm-hmm. and color so that's that's the lineup for the next few months, and we're really I love excited it. to share. I love it. And look, I, I this was so great. Thank you so much for today. Uh, how can people find out more about this? How can they stay plugged in? Mm. JeanetteWolf.com. Um, there's, there's all kinds of forms on there to connect with us. Um, also, planetapothecary at outlook.com is a direct email. And certainly our show. Awesome. One last question for you. Uh, and again, thank you so much for today. What, what is your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? The relationship that we have to the planet herself is for many of us being understood more clearly and our awareness of this incredibly valued, sentient place we call Earth in our experience is informing more and more of our ways of being and creating. And so to truly live in appreciation, thankfulness, and awareness of her and her reflection of our humanity Mm. will resolve so much of these limited perspectives. It is truly a glorious time to be on this planet and with all of you. Wow. And I want to thank you so much and just let you know how much I so appreciate you and your giant yes to take this message, to take these tools, to really say yes to stepping out in the world and helping the rest of us so that we can then help others. And I love all of this. I'm so looking forward to your show. So thank you so much, Dr. Wolf. Thank you so much, Dr. Pat. Benny? All I got to say to you is thank you for pushing all them right buttons today. My pleasure, Pat. I love that. My pleasure. Yep, it's good. And, you know, all of us here, Dr. Wolf, Benny, myself, you know, I think Dr. Wolf said it best. You know, it is a place now of deep gratitude for all of us. And I hope, I hope that you heard what she had to say. And if you didn't, this show will play again later. And please 
Go to her website, find out more. You're going to hear much more about this in the weeks to come. And to all of out, to you out there from all of us here, know you are the be- absolutely most amazing, most amazing listeners on the planet. And we love you so much. Have a fabulous, fabulous holiday. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.